Welcome everyone. I am Nikhil Pradhan and I shall speak to you today about uh, dual mobility total hip replacement. Dual mobility is an old concept which is seeing a resurgence in recent years. And I will uh, discuss with you some recent publication, the design rationale, and give you my thoughts on uh, dual mobility total hip replacement. Hip instability remains a major challenge and is one of the most common causes of revision surgery. And most uh, national registry that we know of uh, have dislocation as the second most common cause for revision surgery. The rate of dislocation is around three to seven percent. And uh, Epinet in his 2012 publication looked at a large number of his own patients. And he found that the dislocation rate was 4.2% in patients over the age of 70, 2.5% in those under the age of 60. And he did find that the revision rate was higher in the younger age group. Revisions for dislocation is a huge impact. In the National Joint Registry 2018 publication, 15% of single stage revisions had dislocation as their indication. And in the Australian registry, 21% had uh, dislocation as an indication. To prevent hip instability, get it right first time should be our motto. Good positioning of the component, balanced muscle tension, Patient education are the mainstay. In complex total hip replacement, wherein there's an increased risk of dislocation, we've tried constrained and captive uh, hips um, previously. They le do lead to impingement with reduced range of motion, which in turn can lead to loosening breakage of the captive device. So the dual mobility design concept is a small head which is captive within a large polyethylene and the large polyethylene in turn articulates with a polished metallic astabular shell which can be either cemented or uncemented into the astabulum. Numerous studies have shown that the DM implants reduce the rate of dislocation to near zero as compared to fixed bearing inserts. Now the earlier designs of uh, DM implants had problems with wear and they had problems with intraprosthetic dislocations and hence their use was quite limited. If you look at the articulations, the articulation one is between the small head and the poly, two is between the large poly and the polished metal shell, and the third is an impingement articulation between the neck and the poly, which in turn causes the large poly to move within the large shell. And it is this third articulation that used to lead to third body wear and also lead to debris, which would cause third body wear within the large on large articulation. Now the newer prosthetic designs for DM show better biomechanics and the newer materials, i.e. the use of the highly cross-linked poly with a highly polished metallic surface lead to less wear. There are two concepts that are put together in a DM hip. One is the Charlie concept of low friction arthroplasty, the use of small head size, and then the Mackey Farah principle of large on large, which reduces the rate of dislocation. The rationale is that during the standard range of motion for, for walking, for example, it is the smaller articulation that comes into play, and it is only when the neck impinges onto the larger poly that you get the extreme range which leads to large and large. 
to decrease the risk of dislocation, the poly overhangs by 11 millimeters to the outer shell and hence increases the jump distance, thus reducing the risk of dislocation. The poly is now a highly cross-linked poly and the edge of the poly is chamfered so that when the neck articulates with that poly, you don't get edge loading. The head is captive within that polyethylene shell, hence does not dislocate. And the large on large is the Makifara principle. So if you now look at um, three papers, one which is by Epinet, published in um, 2019, September, and he talks about should everyone get a DM total hip arthroplasty. The other paper is August 2018, and that is Faris Adad, who looks at a review of various articles and says, what is the evidence? And the third is a 10-year clinical and radiological outcome study of 100 consecutive PHAs by Lauren Dunn et al, April 2018. And they've looked at a mean of 10 years. They found no dislocations, no intra-prosthetic dislocations, and 100% cup survival at a mean of 10 years. Looking at these articles, the R review articles, there is no long-term follow-up as such. Even the 10-year paper is a mean, not a minimum of 10-year follow-up. There will be an opinion bias as it is the opinion of the leading author. On the positive side, it's an experience over many years. It provides a solution to a very difficult problem. And there's a good scientific basis. The biomechanics has been well explained. And the early joint registry data for the DM implants is quite promising with wear being the same as that of fixed bearing. So what are the indications? At present, I think the indications are in a complex total hip replacement wherein it is difficult to balance the muscle tension and balance leg length. Patients with an increased risk of dislocation such as neuromuscular disorders, learning difficulty patients. And if the patients have a lack of ability to follow hip precautions, such as dementia, Alzheimer's, I think these are good indications. The question then is, can we extend these indications? And I propose that there are four possible extensions to our indications. One being total hip replacement for fracture neck of femurs where we know there's an increased chance of dislocation. Second is where we, you want to improve the range of motion, but provide stability, such as patients who want to squat, plumbers who want to get into difficult positions under tables or under kitchen cabinets, etc. In the short obese patient with large inner diameter of their thighs, we know that they impinge at their thighs leading to an increased risk of dislocation. And what about those patients who are above the age of 75, 80? We know they have a higher rate of dislocation. Should we be using a DM as their primary total hip? So going forward, there is a need for long-term follow-up. Surgeon training will be crucial so that we understand the biomechanics, how to position the cup correctly so as to maximize function reduce impingement and intraprosthetic dislocations. So in summary, the newer DM implants have an improved biomechanics and design. The highly cross-linked poly has reduced wear. Early results are encouraging with outcomes that are similar to fixed implants with regards to wear with a decreased risk of dislocation. And there is a need for long-term follow-up. Thank you.